Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello internet, it's Big Dave here, and this is Forced Showdown from developer Beta Dwarf. This game is currently available on Steam for the price of $20, so if you like what you see during the course of this video, please check the description below where you will find all the relevant information linked to the Steam store page, the developer's website, so you can get more information. Now, a couple of years ago, when the original Forced was released, I was kind of of two minds about the game. I had followed the Kickstarter and was absolutely charmed by the developer Beta Dwarf, their story about having squatted in a classroom in their college without the faculty's knowledge, living there and starting the development of Forced, it won me over, absolutely. Unfortunately, the game itself looked like it was probably going to be some kind of action RPG Diablo-like game and I just didn't think that I had a place in my life for another one of those games at the moment. Luckily though, I went ahead and played Forced upon release, and what I found, much to my surprise, was probably one of the best multiplayer co-op games that I have ever played. Instead of that action-oriented combat that I expected, I got a combat-focused, puzzle-solving co-op experience that I had never, ever experienced before. It was great. It was wonderful. Two or three friends joining in, and we had a hell of a time playing this game. So you have to imagine, I was pretty excited when I heard that there was going to be a follow-up to one of my all-time favorite co-op games in the form of Forced Showdown. You can also imagine how I felt when I found out it was going to be single-player only. Yes, I was dejected, but I still followed the game during its development and seemed somewhat intrigued by the ideas that they had and what this game could be. And now that I've played it, I have to say, they've done it again. Beta Dwarf has produced an absolute gem of a game here. This game is a perfect distillation of exactly what's been going on in video games for the last couple of years, especially indie games. You've got elements that will be immediately familiar. There are cards in a very Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering-like way. There is the roguelike system, or road, roguelite, I guess I'm supposed to say now, right? The permanent death, the procedural generation, the... Uh, random run based gameplay that you get from games like Isaac and and games like Rogue Legacy. They've also got that twin stick combat that's become so popular. Games like Nuclear Throne, Enter the Gungeon, and of course Isaac bringing that combat back into prominence over the last several years. It's everything that I love about games in a package from a developer that is absolutely passionate about what they do and does it so well. Now I'm gushing here and this isn't really helping you decide whether this is a game that you may want to play or not so let's just jump right into it. You've kind of got the pitch there right? There are cards, roguelite elements, and combat of a twin stick variety. So let's jump in and let you get a feel for Forced Showdown. So here we go, we're going to jump right into the programs. There are three programs that you can choose from. You have to beat one to unlock the next, so that should tell you that I have not yet beaten Frontline, despite my best efforts. These do get considerably harder as you go, which I think is a great thing. So the program is kind of just like the world. Within it, there are going to be several challenges leading up to you facing Wrath, the Burninator as the uh, final boss, if you will. So we're just going to jump into the Crucible, and that's going to be where we uh, do the bulk of our playing here. So once we select our program, we are going to select our hero. Now the reason that that thing was called a program is because the major conceit of this game is that this is a television show. These are heroes that are fighting in arenas for the entertainment of the masses. Cameras are there, there's an announcer, things like that. So uh, now we're going to select our hero who's going to go into battle. We've got the Squire of Light who has a sort of a, a mid-range channeled energy attack. Uh, my favorite character, I don't mind saying, and the character we will be playing as. You've got uh, Volko who was in the original Forced. He has a giant hammer. See it there? It's a giant hammer. 
We also have Stormbringer, another returning character, and uh, Bow and Arrow. Bow and Arrow. Ravager seems to be here to replace the character who had two claws, who may have also been named Ravager, I don't remember, in Forced Showdown, but plays very similar, short-ranged, very quick melee attacks, builds up a combo, and uh, does some real damage with that. We are going to play as the Squire of Light. We're going to work with a companion here. Uh, Zhao Long is a, uh, a glass cannon, a ranged character who is weak but can do a decent amount of damage for you. And Brutus is your tanky sort of melee character. I like Brutus. He helps to keep guys off of me, so I'm going to roll with Brutus. I have my deck selected over here. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about deck stuff a little later on. Needless to say, my deck is going to come into play in order to uh, build my character. You'll see a bit of that as we go. Again, a game that is much, much easier to show than to tell. Tested must fight his way through numerous titans, earning points along the way. Tonight's show will be The Crucible. At the end of the hall stands the ultimate challenge. Well, there's our challenge. Raf the Burninator. So uh, we're going to head into the game now. Lots of stuff going on here. Plenty of stuff to, uh, to talk about or see, but... I'm not going to talk about any of it. What's that zero of 20 bar at the bottom? We'll talk about it later. What's all this other stuff on the left-hand side? We'll talk about it later. Let's jump in here. So each of these little glowing portals will take us to a multi-part battle arena. Essentially uh, seven or eight. I believe it's eight levels. Uh, seven including a boss, maybe. I can't recall exactly. You're going to fight through each of those arenas, kind of like rooms in a game like Isaac, if we have to make a direct analog like that. And when you get to the end, you're going to fight the boss. And when you're done, you're going to move on to the next one until you get enough charge in this little meter right here to open this portal, which will allow you to open this door, which will allow you to move on to the next area. And there you go. So each of these is going to have sort of a mutator. They're called battle rules in this case. Uh, now, as far as I know, you can't see what the battle rule actually means when you're on this screen. You just kind of have to remember them or kind of guess uh, so in this case we have heat wave we have supplies lightning rod we have companion curse and we have laser leash uh, so i do know what laser leash does it puts a leash between myself and my companion that will hurt enemies so basically we'll have a tether between us uh, and we can kill people with it i like the sound of that so here we go forced showdown there you see at the bottom, laser leash, a beam connects you and your companion dealing eight damage to enemies it touches, and there will be additional enemies in this because of it. And so we are going up against Frank the Ever-Living as our boss, and uh, we're going to see a lot of Frank. He's going to talk to us, he's going to try to mess with us as we go through our various arenas, and uh, we're not going to let Frank get to us though. So this is our initial hand. Again, yes, cards, right? Remember, cards. So we can mulligan. Uh, I'm going to mulligan this heal because I definitely don't need that. But I do have two one-cost cards in my initial hand. Absolutely great, especially Squire Puff. And we'll talk about that in just a second. I think this is a pretty good hand to keep. So I'm going to hang on to the three cards and drop one. We'll draw back up to four, and here are our options. We have a single mana, and we have two cards that cost a mana. Uh, I'm going to cast Squire Puff for sure. Squire Puff is a spell that summons a an additional companion, a second companion. If that companion survives, I get a permanent 15% damage buff. This is a great card to pull on your first arena, first hand. It's great, and I'm going to play it. 
That's pretty much it. Obviously, zero mana. We can't do anything else. I am playing this with a controller. Mouse and keyboard controls work fine. For whatever reason, though, I just prefer to play this particular character with a controller, so I am doing that. Over here, you can see our health in the lower uh, left-hand corner here. My health is 120. My companion's health is 50. The health for the, uh, the little uh, squire, I don't believe, will be displayed. These are my abilities real quick. This is an AOE that uh, jerp, jumps out or bursts out from my body. And uh, this is a bubble that lasts like two seconds. Yeah, two seconds, in fact. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. I also have this passive ability uh, that when I'm attacked, Beam of Light has tw uh, fires twice as fast for two seconds. So Beam of Light is my primary weapon, which you're about to see right now. So there's that leash connecting me to my primary companion, Brutus. And now we are going to go try and kill some enemies. Here is my uh, here's my beam of light. You can notice that uh, basically what it does is it tries to uh, jump out and kill people. And eventually it gets charged up and it fires off a nice brutal shot that wipes out my enemies. arena completed when we're done we can uh, step into this glowing circle to move on and you can see squire puff did survive so that means we are going to get a permanent 15 percent damage buff and there it is and you're going to see the buffs and the uh, abilities start to stack up over here as we snowball during the course of this run getting more and more powerful getting ready for our boss fight so now I have two mana, so I could play Bomb Drones. That's a consumable card. Uh, single use, or in this case, two uses on this Bomb Drone. Okay, cool. Uh, you can also see deals 100 damage to one random enemy. Replenish at the end of the arena. So regain used charges if you still have any charges left. I have two charges, so if I only use one during an arena, I'll get one back. If I use two, that's it. The card's gone. Ooh, shiny will give me a random upgrade and it will cost two less mana. That sounds pretty good. Uh, fusion power overcharge gains a 50% damage buff. Pretty nice. And uh, duo bot, just two little guys come down and shoot, shoot, shoot. And then I get a 2% uh, damage increase for uh, every enemy killed during that period. I think it's got to be ooh shiny, and we're going to cross our fingers that we're going to get a card we can play. Ah, we did not. Oh, well. So we got over overcharge, uh, which will give us a second overcharge after a short delay. Uh, but we can't play it because it costs two mana, and we have no other one mana cards. So round two begins. Here we go. Going to try to play a little more carefully this time. I was sort of uh, not really paying attention to the enemies who were shooting at me last time. Let's try not to get hit. So Frank is using his uh, little spell. You can see down below Frank's portrait, he has a spell. It uh, throws down one of these little things right here, as you're seeing. And then that shoots out a beam and tries to hurt me. Frank's kind of a dick. Oh, there we go. Finally found the final enemy here. And we got him. Uh, this is fun, breaking these. As far as I can tell, though, I've never had anything come out of them. So as much fun as it is to break them, I think it's kind of a fruitless task. Companion's health does recharge at the end of every arena. He will also come back to life if he dies. Your health, however, does not recharge. And you will not come back to life if you die. So we got a couple of options here. Overcharge becomes more powerful, or we get a second overcharge. I think what I'm inclined to do here, instead of spending uh, three for a single spell, is to do two and one. So over overcharge means we'll get a second overcharge after a brief delay. And at the ready means uh, during the rush period, which is the first 15 seconds of any arena, we get additional move speed. So we go faster, basically. So let's cast that as well. And again, we are starting to stack up the buffs. Lovely. I absolutely love it. So we are moving nice and fast. And uh, let's go ahead and deploy that overcharge. There it is. And a second one. Nice. 
There we go. Not really making much use of our leash here. You see those little blue uh, symbols that I'm collecting? Those are my uh, points. Points will come into play when we finish this out. So for right now, don't worry your pretty little head about what points are. Just know that they're a good thing and I need them. Another arena, another set of cards to play. We've got another Squire Puff. That 15% damage bonus from the second Squire Puff would stack. So it does behoove us to use a Squire Puff. I think in this case, our path is clear. It's fusion power to increase the power of my overcharge and a Squire Puff. And now it is absolutely paramount that we keep that Squire Puff alive. So let's do it. No, you're hitting my Squire Puff. Luckily, health does heal uh, everybody, including your allies. Grab that. So if Squire Puff gets hurt, we can repair his damage. All right, so enemies that have a uh, gold or yellowish health bar are adds that do not need to be killed. The red health bar enemies do need to be killed before you can proceed, and we did it. We got our we got our puff to the end of the round. We're going to get more damage. We really need more life, though. So we are going to get another 15% damage buff, as you can see here, too. Wonderful. And uh, speaking of health, oh, here we go. We just got a heal for a heal for 100 health. Now we are going to use up some of that if we use 100 health if we if we use a 100 health heal we are going to lose some of that 100 uh, so i think i'm just going to kind of hold on to it i'm going to chance that i can make it through the next uh the next arena alive and uh you know maybe get a little bit lower and feel more comfortable using a large 100 health heal I just activated two consumables. Consumables go down here onto my face buttons of my controller or to the buttons that you've predefined for your mouse and keyboard setup. And uh, this is a good way to keep track of them. Again, this is the one that uh, if I don't use both charges in arena, I will get one back. And this is the one where a couple of little drones will come down and shoot guys and I'll get a damage buff at the end for however many guys we kill. Let's jump into this, let's finish it up. We've got uh, three more arenas, including this one before the boss. Let's go. You can see there at the end of my, uh, at the end of my channel that I get that little extra bam. So you wanna kinda try to time that. And uh, when you can, it is uh, very, very nice. Of course, we also have to remember that we have overcharge which is a great ability. Our companion doing exactly what our companion should do, and that is uh, taking a bunch of damage for us. You can see those enemies, they leave behind a little sphere. I believe if you don't kill that sphere quickly enough, they will respawn. Uh, but you can see how with this character, with his mid-range uh, with his mid-range uh, channel ability, how having a tank that's out in front of you is extremely helpful. Not a lot going on in this arena, just a couple of fencing guys, huh? Okay, okay. So we are still at the same amount of health. Uh, you know, right now we're sitting at what, about, we'd heal about 52. Uh, it's, it, I want to hang on to it. I really want to hang on to it. What I really need, though, are more cards. Uh, but I am definitely going to take uh, Paranoid. It's just basically going to give us a shield. When you see a card that has an add-on ability, that's an additional ability that would happen if you play a second card. So if I play a second Paranoid, I get the add-on ability, which is uh, grant, uh, granting me a shield 10 seconds after the arena starts. So I'd start with a shield, and then I would get another shield 10 seconds into the arena if I could play a second Paranoid. I'm going to continue hanging on to my minor heal, and uh, we're going to take on these uh, fancy guys. On guard. There we go. Collecting my points. There you go. Focus on my, focus on my tank, please. Oh no. Well, now it's gonna be a whole lot easier to make that decision about that heal. 
be using about 70, healing about 70 now. I, I like that. Uh, okay, okay, hot coffee. Um, I really would like you earlier in the, in the game. Uh, but thank you for showing up. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use this, which will heal me up to full. And we'll hang on to hot coffee because maybe next round uh, we'll be able to play multiple cards with the use of a card like hot coffee. Uh, well, actually, we're only going to get one card, so scratch that. Let's just murder these fencers. There we go. Keep our distance. Use our overcharge. Heal our companion. Oh no, I don't like that one bit. All right. I thought I had him. I held it and I held it and I held it and I thought I had him. Wonderful graphics. I mean, just look at this. I. This is just a well-made game. Love the music, love the graphics, love the art style, love everything about it. The gameplay is tight. Controls, wonderful. Character design, look at Frank. He's a rat made out of people. I, something, I don't know. It's... It's off the wall, and it's fun. All right, Lucky Dice. Draw one card. Gain 6% chance crit. All right. And hey, we got another Paranoid. So now we are going to get that secondary shield after 10 seconds elapse in the match. So I love it. Oh, we can see here this little guy uh, holding this uh, cart. He's uh, kind of like a uh, treasure goblin. You uh, destroy him, and you're going to get a lot of of coins and points. So we're gonna start off our match by going after him. He will, as you might imagine, eventually run away. So we're gonna focus on him. Again, the yellow health bar enemies we don't have to kill, but it can be nice to uh, get yourself some space, especially when you're dealing with a character like Frank. Frank goes to pieces and then immediately starts raining down death on you. And Frank killed us. That's it. It's over. <laughs> Frank killed us. Yes, showing us indeed, showing me. So you can see right there my mistake was I wasn't ready for Frank's multi-stage attack. I got hit with every single one of those stages and uh, that was it. So I don't get any of my gold or anything because I didn't complete a, uh, a battle. So, oh well. But that's the gameplay. That's the gameplay. Imagine that with different characters, melee characters, uh, with uh, range characters. Yeah, that's what you're in for with Forest Showdown. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the other aspects that you're going to get with this game. You uh, you also will see there are daily challenges. Uh, this daily challenge always says 11 February when we when I first uh, sign in, and then it it fixes itself. I don't really understand. But there are a couple of different types of daily challenges. Uh, one try daily challenge, a regular daily, and you can see here, you know, you've got a rule for the daily. So in this case, heat wave, fiery projectiles fly across the arena. A lot of them. 20 damage per impact. So you can challenge yourself. You got your daily leaderboard, stuff like this. Look at this. No one has played yet. Come on. Oh, come on. People, buy this game. This is a wonderful game that you can play for hours and hours, please. Now, again, we said we had cards, right? How do we get cards? We take spins on the Wheel of Fortune, TM. Let's take a spin. Let's get a couple of new cards, shall we? Here we go. There we go. We got a common. Destroy all summon units. Recover. Uh, so a recover. Get your charge back if five plus enemies are killed. Let's spin again. You see I have 10,000 or 1,000 gold at this point. A rare card. This is for Volkos, the uh, hammer-wielding Volcano Man. Fully charge your hammer. Uh, it adds an additional 50% damage. Nice. He has a very large hammer that he swings in an arc, and he can charge up for more damage, and that card would augment that top-tier damage when he charges his hammer. Let's spin again. Another common. Another spin. 
And we got 100 shards. Shards are used to create cards. Uh, so you can use coins to spin for cards or shards to create those cards. Another comic card. Plus 40 health and draw a card. I like that. It's a little expensive. Get a card draw. Get a health. Get a little health. A little health. You notice I was a little apprehensive about using that large 100 health heal, even though it only costs two mana to use. This is a little bit more expensive. Gets me a card. And I potentially don't blow a lot of that large heal. Oh, so close. So close to a purple. Here we have a card for the Ravager character. One more spin. I want to get another blue or a purple. Come on. Help me out here, game. Wow, not even... <laughs> nothing but greens. Nothing but greens on the horizon there. There we... You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Come on. All right. There we go. We got something. We got something. It's a rare 12% chance to block with a kicker. Consume all your mana for an improved effect. 3% chance to block per mana spent. So that is a very nice uh, build for a tanky character. Card for building a tanky character. Another common. And we might as well spend all our money, right? Can't take it with us. There it is. 25% chance to crit. And we are done. We're out of money. We got a bunch of new cards. Here's the card interface. Uh, if you've played Hearthstone, perhaps you'll find this somewhat familiar because it is somewhat familiar. Now, laying out cards in this sort of an array isn't necessarily the domain of Blizzard Entertainment. Uh... It's an efficient way to do it, so that's how they've done it. You can uh, look at the character-specific cards up here at the top. You can also sort by spells, upgrades, consumables, etc., etc. You can build your decks. This is the default game, uh, name that it gives a deck that you don't uh, name. Deck I didn't care to name. Uh, but yeah, it, it's 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 a pretty straightforward uh, card building, uh, deck building interface. Nothing super, uh, super... Uh, innovative or unique about it. It is just a list of cards that you build and you have 30 cards in your deck and man, this looks a lot like Hearthstone, but that's okay. Here we go. So one last thing I'll touch on before we finish up. Quests. Quests are kind of weird because in a lot of ways they're random. You don't necessarily know about a, a chain in a quest or a part of a quest until you happen to sort of discover it. Uh, so, for instance, Record Breaker, clear five arenas in less than 12 seconds each. I unlocked that because I did that once. I just randomly cleared an arena in 12 seconds. And so now I know about the Record Breaker uh, achievement. These map directly to achievements. And if I can collect everything in this row, I get the bonus that is the reward that is uh, stated at the top. So I would unlock a new companion, and I would get 10 health overall. You can see some of the previous ones that I've completed. Uh, for instance, this was to unlock uh, Volko. This was to unlock Brutus the Companion. This unlocked Stormbringer, the Archer. And uh, this unlocked Ravager. These were all in uh, the Crucible. And of course, I still have this guy right here. Win a battle without picking up any health globes. Globes sent to you from your companion, it's okay. So if your companion picks up a health cube, they're not going to screw you over. Health globe, excuse me. Destroy 14 barrels within two seconds. That's something I can do, and it actually gives me a reason to destroy those barrels. Oh my god, I'm going to go right back in the game after this and do this. Wonderful. All right, great. So yeah, there's a lot of replayability here. There is a lot of interesting gameplay because of the card system. You can really build these characters in the direction that you want. You can build a character uh, that is a little more crit oriented, a character that is a, uh, has a lot of heals in his deck because you know that you're a scrub like me and you take a lot of damage. Uh, you can compensate for your weaknesses. You can accentuate your strengths with good deck building. I love games like that and the way that they've integrated the Hearthstone style deck building into a twin stick action rogue light. There's so many buzzwords with this game. It's just wonderful. They've, they've heaped on all of my favorite toppings onto an absolutely stellar video game pizza. And I, I, 
I can't say enough good things about this game. This has been Forced Showdown from Beta Dwarf. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.